Have you ever wondered what might have led students to occupy their own university in 1968 in the heart of Paris? In the late 60s, the air at Nanterre University was thick with dissatisfaction and the scent of rebellion. The student body was restless, their hearts heavy with issues that extended beyond the confines of their campus. The US war in Vietnam was a thorn in their side, a conflict they staunchly opposed, and the state of their education was a bitter pill they refused to swallow any longer. They demanded reform, a change in the very system that was supposed to shape them into future leaders. At the forefront of this brewing storm was Daniel Cohn Bendit, a charismatic figure who would soon become the face of their resistance. His leadership and passion ignited the spark of rebellion that was smouldering within the students. So, with these issues burning in their hearts, the students took a step that would shake the nation. On a day like any other, the students decided to take matters into their own hands. The year was 1968, and the air was heavy with anticipation at Nanterre University in Paris. The lecture halls, normally filled with the hum of academic discourse, were about to become the nerve centre of a student-led uprising. It was an ordinary day, but what was about to unfold was far from ordinary. The lecture hall, usually a place of learning, was transformed into a battlefield of ideas. The students, under the leadership of Daniel Cohn Bendit, had decided to oppose the status quo, the US war in Vietnam, and demand educational reform. Imagine, if you would, the scene. The lecture hall, usually filled with students diligently taking notes, was now occupied by a sea of young faces, their eyes filled with determination and a burning desire for change. They claimed this space as their own, a symbol of their resistance against a system they believed was unjust. Their demands were clear, an end to the war in Vietnam, a reform in education, and a voice in the decisions that affected their lives. The lecture hall became their headquarters, their sanctuary, their beacon of hope. It was here that they planned their protests, strategized their actions, and rallied their troops. The occupation of the lecture hall was more than just a physical act, it was a powerful statement. It was a declaration of their intent to fight for their beliefs, their rights and their future. They were no longer just students, they were revolutionaries, activists, change makers. They transformed the lecture hall from a place of passive learning into a dynamic hub of active resistance. The walls that once echoed with the voices of professors now resounded with the passionate debates of students. The desks that were once laden with textbooks were now covered with protest signs and plans for demonstrations, and thus the lecture hall became a symbol of their rebellion. It stood as a testament to their courage, their defiance and their relentless pursuit of justice and change. It was here that the 68 events began, marking a significant chapter in the annals of student activism. The small spark in the lecture hall soon ignited a wildfire. What began as a localised occupation of Nanterre University rapidly spread like a contagion, infecting the minds and spirits of students across the nation. The lecture halls, once silent with the drone of academic discourse, now roared with the fervour of political dissent. This was not just a revolution of the mind, but of the heart, as students from diverse backgrounds found unity in their shared opposition to the Vietnam War and their collective hunger for educational reform. As the protests multiplied, so did the tension. The air was thick with it, as tangible as the placards held aloft by the increasingly emboldened students. The authorities, once dismissive of what they perceived as youthful rebellion, now found themselves on the back foot. The corridors of power echoed with the whispers of unease, as the powers that be grappled with the growing unrest. Yet it wasn't just the students who were dissatisfied. Their cries for change resonated with other sections of society, who too were weary of the status quo. Workers, intellectuals, artists, all began to lend their voices to the chorus of dissent. The students of Nanterre University, led by the indomitable Daniel Cohn Bendit, had managed to strike a chord that reverberated throughout the country, shaking the very foundations of the establishment. And so, the protests grew. What had begun as a small flame in the heart of a single university had now engulfed the nation. 
Students who had once been content with their heads buried in their books now stood shoulder to shoulder, their voices echoing in the streets. They were no longer just students, but revolutionaries, their spirits ignited by the spark of rebellion. The protests had grown bigger than anyone could have imagined. It wasn't just about a war in a far-off land or the need for educational reform, it was about a generation's desire for change, for a future that was in their hands. And as the protests grew, so did their resolve. They had started a fire, and they were determined to see it burn. The protests had grown bigger than anyone could have imagined. The government, feeling the pressure, decided to act. It was clear that these protests were not a mere nuisance. They were a force to be reckoned with. The government's response? A show of force. The police were called in, their presence a stark contrast to the youthful vigour of the student protesters. The clashes between the students and the police were inevitable. The students, driven by a deep-seated belief in their cause, were not easily intimidated. They met the stern faces of the police with chants and slogans, their spirits unbroken. The streets of Paris, once filled with the humdrum of everyday life, now echoed with the sounds of conflict. The air was heavy with tension, the city on the brink of a standoff. And then, the inevitable happened. The police, in a bid to regain control, moved in. Tear gas clouded the air. The piercing sound of sirens filled the atmosphere. Students were dragged away, their cries of protest muffled by the chaos. The university, once a bastion of intellectual discourse, was now a battleground. But the government didn't stop there. Deciding that the situation was beyond control, they took an extraordinary step. Nanterre University, the birthplace of this rebellion, was shut down. The lecture halls, once filled with the animated discussions of students, now stood empty and silent, a haunting reminder of the fiery spirit that had once filled its corridors. Yet even as the dust settled, the spirit of the students remained undeterred. The closure of the university was a setback, no doubt, but it was not the end. The students, now more determined than ever, vowed to continue their fight. Their resolve, tested by the harsh response of the government, had only grown stronger. The government had taken drastic action, but the effects of the 68 events were far from over. The seeds of protest had been sown, and they would grow, fueled by the determination and courage of the students, into a movement that would change the course of history. The protests may have ended, but their echoes were heard around the world. Indeed, the immediate aftermath of the 68 events was a time of intense upheaval and change. The students at Nanterre University had not only made their voices heard, but had also sparked a flame that ignited the passion of many others. The demands for reform in education and opposition to the Vietnam War had resonated with a wide cross-section of French society, and the effects were far-reaching. Changes in French education were perhaps the most immediate and tangible impact of these protests. The French government, in response to the students' demands, initiated educational reforms that aimed to democratize higher education. Universities were given increased autonomy, and the curriculum was diversified to accommodate a broader range of disciplines and interests. The rigid hierarchical structure of the educational system was broken down, paving the way for a more inclusive and democratic approach to education, but the impact of the 68 events extended beyond the realm of education. The protests had managed to galvanize French society in a way that few other events had. They sparked a broader conversation about societal norms and values, the traditional, conservative fabric of French society was questioned, and this led to significant changes in social attitudes and norms. It was a period of profound social and cultural change, as the old order was challenged, and new ideas about freedom, equality and democracy took root. The 68 events also had a profound impact beyond the borders of France. They inspired student movements around the world, from Berkeley in the United States to Mexico City and Tokyo. The spirit of defiance and the demand for change that had been ignited in that lecture hall in Nanterre University resonated with students across the globe. They too began to question societal norms and demand changes in their respective societies and educational systems. 
In the United States, the protests at Berkeley became a symbol of the counterculture movement and opposition to the Vietnam War. In Mexico City, students took to the streets to demand democratic reforms, and in Tokyo, students protested against the Japan-US Security Treaty. The 68 events had, in effect, started a global wave of student activism and protests. The 68 events were not just a series of protests. They were a statement, a call to action, a demand for change. They challenged the status quo and dared to dream of a better future. They were a testament to the power of collective action and the indomitable spirit of youth. The world watched as a group of students in a lecture hall in Paris dared to challenge authority, to question established norms and to demand change. And the world listened. Thus, a group of students in a lecture hall in Paris managed to leave a mark on history that still resonates today.